Prodigal Daughter is the 161st episode of the television series Star Trek – Deep Space Nine, the 11th episode of the seventh season. Miles O'Brien goes missing on his trip to an exoplanet in the Sapora system, which happens to be where Esri Dax's family resides. Esri Dax visits her family and several members of her family are introduced, which Cinefantastique described as, "...unsavory." Esri's mother is Yanas, and played by actress Lee Taylor Young. Prodigal Daughter was written by Bradley Thompson and David Weddell, and Victor Lobl was the director. The episode was nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Art Direction. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Plot. Julian Bashir reveals to Benjamin Sisko a confidence from O'Brien, that he went to New Sydney, the seventh planet of the Sapora system, to look for Morica, the widow of an Orion Syndicate member named Liam Bilby, whom he befriended while undercover. O'Brien felt some responsibility for Bilby's death while he was undercover in the Syndicate. Because Esri Dax's family, the Tiggins, own a mining operation near New Sydney where they live, Sisko asks her to help find O'Brien. Returning home, Esri is reunited with her domineering mother, Yanas Tegan, a shrewd businesswoman, and her brothers Norvo and Janelle, who work for the business. Yanas promises to look into the matter of O'Brien's disappearance, while criticizing Esri's life choices. Esri's brother Norvo is happy to see her, while her eldest brother Janelle is bitter about her tendency to stay away from home. Janelle mostly manages the technical aspects of the mine, while Norvo does the bookkeeping. Norvo has interests in painting, poetry and music, but is extremely self-critical of his work. Esri's visit allows her to catch up with Norvo, who is ruled by his mother's iron hand. Esri's heated criticism of Yana's tyrannical treatment of Norvo is cut short by the arrival of O'Brien in handcuffs, who's been rescued by the local police from a run-in with the Orion Syndicate, and released to Dax's custody. Miles announces that he found Morica Bilby, her body, dead at the bottom of a river. O'Brien contends that Morica was killed by the Syndicate, a theory dismissed by a police lieutenant who insists that the criminals would never murder the widow of one of their own. Later, a self-described, "...commodities broker," named Bacar sees O'Brien in the mines and warns Janelle that O'Brien's life will be in danger if he doesn't leave immediately. O'Brien helps Janelle fix some mining equipment, which has had inexplicable malfunctions lately. O'Brien thinks that the Orion Syndicate is intimidating the Tiggins and tells Dax so. Sensing Bacar may be a member of the syndicate, O'Brien acquires Esri's permission to check the mining company's financial records. He is stunned to learn that Morica Bilby was on the Tegan payroll at the time of her death—a fact which links the syndicate to Esri's family. O'Brien informs a disbelieving Esri that someone close to her may be involved in Morica's murder. Esri orders O'Brien to withhold his findings from the police until she speaks with her family. Esri confronts her family and Yanas suspects that it was Janelle who killed Morica. Confronted with the truth, Janelle admits that Morica was on the payroll as a favor to Bacar and the syndicate, which bailed the mining company out of a financial crisis, but he denies killing Morica. Angered that her son struck such a corrupt deal behind her back, Yanas doubts his innocence. To everyone's surprise, Norvo confesses, saying he took action after Morica tried to extort more money from the family, and hid the woman's body in the river. He tries to justify his action by saying that he was never trusted to make big decisions. As a result, Norvo is sentenced to 30 years in prison, while Yanas is left wondering what role she played in his downfall. <laughs> 